союзники бачать Україну та Грузію майбутніми членами Альянсу. Наше партнерство також еволюціонує. At NATO we believe that Ukraine already has an instrument that allows it to come closer to NATO. They actually don't just criticize but they get their hands dirty. They they go and they work. Trust indeed is the currency in in the world of security and intelligence, um, the main currency. Всім доброго дня. Ми будемо говорити про НАТО. Ви бачите прапор НАТО перед собою. А чому? Тому що ми зараз спілкуємося із послом НАТО в Україні або керівником Офісу зв'язку НАТО. Олександр, вітаю у нашій віртуальній студії. Дуже дякую, радий бути з вами. Спробуємо поговорити, зрозуміти, що дала Україна НАТО за цей час, чого чекає НАТО від України, ну і загалом про життя. Поїхали. Звичайно, Україна, як суверенна і демократична європейська держава, має першорядне значення для євроатлантичної безпеки взагалі. І Україна сьогодні вже є одним з найближчих та найважливіших партнерів НАТО. Україна направляє своїх військових для участі в місіях та операціях НАТО. І ми дуже цінуємо ці внески, які демонструють відданість України справі євроатлантичної безпеки. І, як зазначено в декларації Бухарестського саміту, союзники бачать Україну та Грузію майбутніми членами Альянсу. Я перше дуже хочу подякувати за те, що ви спробували, спробували спілкуватися з нами українською, і я все-таки поставлю ще одне запитання українською. Після того ми все-таки mm-hmm. перейдемо на англійську. Оскільки ви шість років працювали в Україні, які зміни ви побачили за цей час? Що змінилося навколо нас і можливо уставлення українців до НАТО? З початком російської агресії проти України НАТО суттєво збільшило політичну та практичну допомогу вашої країни. І е, коли я розпочав свою е, роботу в Києві е, у вересні е, 2015 року, е, е, менш ніж за рік, е, у липні 2016 е, року, е, був прийнятий комплексний пакет допомоги е, на Варшав, Варшавському саміті НАТО для України. І цей пакет включає практичні заходи допомоги і підтримки, дорадчу допомогу та програми для посилення спроможності, оборонних спроможностей України. І наше партнерство також еволюціонує. І, як ви знаєте, з минулого року України, Україна є партнером з розширеними можливостями для НАТО, і цей статус дозволить нам ще більше поглиблювати нашу співпрацю. I would ask you to be more specific about membership of Ukraine. You know that it is a, a topic of um, political discussion and social discussion in Ukraine. Do you have some messages for Ukrainian people? Um, I do understand that it is not possible to name the date. But anyway, what should happen for us to become a member of NATO? Of course, this is a question that is often asked here, and it's fully understandable, um, because Ukraine is a valued partner uh, of NATO, and since uh, the beginning of Russia's aggression, as I said, uh, NATO has strengthened its uh, practical support and its political support uh, to, uh, to Ukraine. Um, NATO also has an open-door policy on membership, and uh, allies fully stand by their decisions taken at the Bucharest summit, Uh, and this was once again reconfirmed recently uh, during the Brussels summit. It's the one that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. Exactly, uh, that Ukraine and, and Georgia will become members. Uh, at the same time, we expect Ukraine to focus on uh, domestic reforms, to uh, consolidate its democratic institutions, to uh, strengthen the rule of law, to uh, develop its uh, defense and security capabilities in line with NATO standards, principles, and best practices. And uh, of course, uh, we are here because we are committed to helping Ukraine on this path. But I can say that any decision on uh, membership is a 
political decision that has to be taken by all allies on the basis of consensus, because this is how NATO works. Um, so I cannot uh, prejudge any decisions to be taken by its sovereign uh, member states of NATO. Uh, what is important, I think, is, is for Ukraine to continue to focus on what it can do to prepare itself uh, for membership. Um, and that will be ultimately beneficial um, for Ukraine, regardless of when it joins uh, the alliance. But some people say that uh, while we have war, membership is simply impossible. Is that true? Well, once again, it's a political decision. There is nothing in the, in the Washington Treaty that says that. Uh, but ultimately, um, of course, allies will have to be convinced that uh, a new member will strengthen the security of the alliance. Um, and that is why it remains such an important um, collective decision to be made. Probably um, NATO can provide Ukraine with some, uh, sp some specific uh, ideas, some specific plans that can allow Ukraine to get MIP quicker. At NATO we believe that Ukraine already has an instrument that allows it to come closer to NATO and that is the annual national program which was uh, which was created for Ukraine in 2008 um, and um, it, it provides NATO feedback and advice on Ukraine's reform plans. So it's a strategic reform roadmap and it, uh, it focuses on uh, the very same issues that uh, a membership action plan focuses on and that is why uh, we believe the focus now should not be on the format but rather on the substance but of these huge. reforms. A and B is huge. So the idea is to create some, some kind of sub-format that would be shorter. We don't see the necessity for that. Uh, frankly, the ANP doesn't have to be huge. Um, and in fact, in the past uh, few years, Ukraine has used the ANP much more effectively. And the discussions that we've had on the ANP have also been more productive. But ultimately, it depends on Ukraine how it uses the ANP. It is a strategic reform roadmap. It doesn't need to be huge. Uh, and, and complex. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we all understand what the key uh, reform uh, tracks Which are? are. But I already mentioned uh, it's, it's about democratic institutions, it's about the f a functioning uh, institutional system, it's about rule of law, it's about good governance, it's about human rights and fundamental freedoms, it's about um, civil military relations, it's about civilian control. So it's quite about a democratic lot. oversight. Quite a lot. It's quite a lot. These are values that, uh, that NATO, as an alliance of values, is based on. What we have been focusing on uh, as, uh, as the NATO representation to Ukraine um, is mainly on where we can add value, and that is in the defense and the security sector. Um, so in defense we see um, Command and control as the key, one of the key issues. Um, it's the clear delineation of authorities um, between the Ministry of Defense and the Armed Forces and the General Staff of the Armed Forces. Um, in the security sector, we see uh, reform of the security service as a priority, the SBU. Uh, we look forward to uh, the second reading in Parliament of the new law on the SBU, which will uh, in our view, strengthen the service and make it uh, more compliant with uh, Euro-Atlantic best practices. I'd like to focus on SBU a bit. Um, there is a kind of discussion in, in Ukraine, uh, and you know well that Ukrainian, even civil society, is quite divided on this topic. Uh, there are some um, organizations like Human Rights Defenders, which are very much against. That's interesting to hear a uh, NATO view. You have seen uh, this uh, draft, which is preliminarily adopted by the committee. Do you think uh, this one is a good one? And do you see that there are some deficiencies? that certainly should be fixed before adoption? Well, we have been uh, involved in uh, discussions about uh, how the reform of the security service should, should look like and we have been providing our best advice uh, to our Ukrainian partners for several years now. Um, so we, we believe that um, the current draft law on the SBU, which is a requirement of the law on national security, which was adopted back in 2018, of course, 
Um, the current law is the best text we have seen uh, since then. So um, it clearly spells out the SBU's three core functions, which is counterintelligence, counterterrorism, and protection of state secrets. Uh, this is what a modern security service uh, should focus on, and it will make it uh, more efficient and more effective, we believe. The entire uh, international advisory group, uh, we work closely with our partners from the EU and the US Embassy. Uh, we have a common view, uh, and a common, uh, common advice that we have been providing to the Verkhovna Rada, to the security service, and to other interested stakeholders. Um, we have supported, we have come out publicly, uh, you've seen the statements, uh, supporting this, uh, this text and, and recommending it for adoption in, uh, in second reading. So we look forward to that. Uh, we believe it will be a, an important step on Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic and European uh, path. Uh, we also believe it will unlock uh, opportunities for cooperation uh, between Ukraine and allied services. Uh, and of course, even when the law is adopted, um, and I was hoping, of course, that it would happen before the end of my tenure, but uh, I'm confident that it will be eventually adopted. When it is adopted, the long road of implementation will start, uh, which will be at least as difficult as, as the adoption of the legislation. So uh, once again, we stand ready to, to support that process of implementation together with our IEG partners. Yeah, I'll say that uh, this law, if or when adopted, will open some opportunities. Uh, does it go about uh, intelligence uh, cooperation or what, what are the opportunities that, that will appear? Meaningful reform of the security and intelligence uh, sector is of course a prerequisite for enhanced cooperation and information exchange uh, between uh, Ukrainian and allied services. Um, it is one of the opportunities that is offered by the EOP status, the Enhanced Opportunities uh, Partnership. Uh, but it requires, of course, a level of trust. Trust indeed is the currency in, in the world of security and intelligence, um, the main currency. So um, I am, there is already significant uh, practical cooperation ongoing between uh, different services, uh, but it will only be enhanced by, uh, by meaningful reform. And that's why for Ukraine, this can be very beneficial. Um, for the Alliance, it can be beneficial because as we see with events happening around the world, um, sharing information and analysis uh, in real time is invaluable. How can NATO help Ukraine to, to deoccupy its territory? How can NATO help to restore uh, control over territorial waters? As we do not have membership, we do not have Article 5. Our Deputy Secretary General, Ambassador Joanne, just visited uh, Kyiv recently to represent the Alliance at the Crimea Platform Summit uh, and the celebration of Ukraine's uh, independence. This clearly shows um, how seriously NATO takes the issue of Crimea. Um, we absolutely reject Russia's illegal and illegitimate annexation of Crimea and we have always called on Russia to return control over the peninsula to Ukraine. But some practical steps that NATO can do, are there some, some ideas? Well, for example, you, you spoke about territorial waters. We have, um, ever since the beginning of Russia's aggressive actions against Ukraine, we have stepped up uh, our presence in and around the Black Sea, for example. We have uh, more ships, we have more overflights, um, we also have uh, troops based in, uh, in Romania uh, as the uh, tailored forward presence. Uh, so uh, these are practical actions by which we show our solidarity with our Black Sea partners, uh, Ukraine and Georgia. Um, a lot more port visits have been uh, paid to Ukrainian ports since then by allied ships. We have yearly uh, naval exercises with Ukraine. For example, we had Sea Breeze, uh, of course, a US Ukrainian exercise, but this year it was the largest ever with over 30 countries uh, participating. So these are very clear, concrete signs of, of solidarity and support, which we, we intend to continue. You've been here for six years, not only working as an official, you have seen changes. 
uh, what have impressed you the most? Or maybe you can express that in Ukrainian if you're ready to. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'll stick to English for this one. Yeah. But but I have been extremely impressed. I must say, um, in my in my time during my time here, I've um, I've been fortunate to serve in this country at uh, at a historic time, and I, I've actually seen uh, history being made. And what has impressed me most, I think, is is the patriotism and desire for uh, change that I've seen within Ukrainian society. For example, I've spoken to many young, young audiences uh, across the country. I've traveled to, to many places, many regions, and every time I'm, I met young people at universities or leadership courses that we sponsored, um, uh, for example, I've always been truly impressed by how committed they are to, to building a better future for their country. Uh, firstly, by staying here, not not choosing to leave, by getting a quality education either here or uh, also in, in in Western countries, and then bringing bringing their knowledge back to to Ukraine to contribute to to its transformation. And they truly want Ukraine to to turn the page on its past and to build a European uh, and Euro Atlantic future. So just the way that they speak English fluently, the that they're open to the world, they, they follow the news and developments from around the world, they, uh, they have constructive criticism for their own government, um, they, um, they actually don't just criticize but they get their hands dirty, they, they go and they work for the, for the public uh, sector or they, they start a business. Um, I think it's, it's that type of can-do attitude, that, that enthusiasm, that, that is really uh, impressive and it bodes very well for the future of Ukraine. That's why I'm extremely optimistic about Ukraine's uh, future, having, having people like that. Another example of uh, inspirational uh, people I've met um, were the um, athletes who uh, were part of U Ukraine's team for the Invictus Games. NATO uh, was honored and proud to support uh, Team Ukraine in its preparations for the Invictus Games from the very beginning, and I was fortunate to attend some of their training uh, training camps uh, before they went to to the games, and I was truly impressed by how, um, out of very dramatic uh, circumstances for themselves, I mean they they obviously uh, got injured while serving on the front lines. Um, you know, it, they could have, it could have really destroyed um, someone, but instead these, these people, these athletes, uh, these servicemen and women, they, um, they used it as, a, as an opportunity to reinvent themselves, to, to change their lives and to uh, really uh, make the most out of what they had. It's a truly inspirational and I think it's inspired the whole country and the, the thousands and hundreds of thousands of veterans um, that are in Ukraine. Thank you very much for that interview, for that meeting. Uh, я дякую всім, хто продивився нас до завершення. Мені здається, що на цій позитивній ноті можна не лише під, підвести uh, Риску під цим інтерв'ю, але також сподіватися, що Україна дійсно виконає ті реформи, про які ми говорили, і зможе довести альянсу, що ми справді прагнемо до вступу. Дякую, лишайтеся з нами.